Well, as we said, it's been a busy and headline-making day in Washington at the White House and on Capitol Hill. Senator John McCain has been focusing on how foreign policy will play out in this new administration, even as President Trump continues to rehash the election and his claim on voting fraud. I spoke to Senator McCain earlier. Senator McCain, I want to ask you about some national security issues and trade issues in a moment. But first, I'd like to get your reaction to President Trump reportedly repeating to congressional leaders last night his unfounded claim that three to five million illegally uh, cast votes cost him the popular vote victory. Your colleague, Senator Lindsey Graham, told CNN today it, it's the most inappropriate thing for the president to say without proof. Do you agree with Senator Graham? Well, I, I obviously have seen no evidence of uh, illegal voting, but my focus has been on national security, getting General Mattis in as Secretary of Defense, working uh, with Pompeo, working on doing those issues that are national security. I, a long time ago, uh, honestly, I've stopped reacting to everything that the president has stated and try to work on the issues and the people that he's going to surround himself with whom I'm very pleased with as far as national security is concerned. Well, let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about Russia. I, you've been very outspoken. CNN's reporting that U.S. investigators are scrutinizing late December calls between President Trump's national security advisor, Michael Flynn, and Russia's ambassador. Do you have confidence in General Flynn's ability to, to do his job? I do. I, I have no information about these uh, phone calls, although I don't think it's abnormal. But what I am worried about is our entire approach to Russia and the, the sanctions, which I believe must not only be in place but increased. Uh, look, this guy is, is, a, is a war criminal. He used uh, aircraft with precision weapons to strike hospitals in Aleppo, uh, intentionally slaughtering innocent men, women, and children. That's, uh, that's disgraceful. He's partitioned Ukraine. He has taken Crimea. He continues to pu put enormous pressure on the Baltic countries and others. And he is our major threat. Do you, do you think President Trump at all shares any of that conviction in Russia? I mean, you've called Russia a grave danger to the mm -hmm. United States. I know that General Mattis and uh, uh, now uh, Director of CIA Pompeo uh, General Flynn, I believe, but I also know General Kelly. I know they all share my view. And so I believe, I hope that their views, and I know that President Trump really respects them, will have an effect on his view of Russia. It, it was just yesterday, uh, Sean Spicer, the press secretary, said that the president would not rule out joint U.S.-Russia operations against ISIS. Is that something you would, you would support? I, I would... I would be deeply disturbed if such a thing were happening. Let me just give you the example. They have been bombing and striking the moderate opposition, the people that we armed and trained. Meanwhile, ISIS retakes Palmyra and they don't do anything about it. It certainly shows the Russians' priorities, which are not ISIS. They are to consolidate Bashar Assad in power and consolidate their now uh, significant, in fact, in some ways, the most powerful role in the Middle East. That's a long, long way from uh, when they got thrown out of Egypt in 1973. So do you think, in a sense, partnering with Russia allegedly against ISIS, are you saying that would be tantamount to partnering with the Assad regime and, and I guess by extension Iran? Of course. Of course. I mean, does anybody believe now that, that Bashar Assad is going to willingly leave power? I would remind you that it was uh, then President Obama that said Assad must go. It's not a matter of when, he, but whether it's a matter of when. And now there has been tacit uh, accommodation to the realities on the ground. And the realities on the ground are that the Free Syrian Army and our efforts to assist them have been totally negated because of a total failure of Obama policies and strategies. There has been none, and we're paying a very heavy price for it. In Iraq, the president the other day reiterated his thought about taking Iraq's oil. Uh, he said, we didn't do it before, maybe we'll have another chance to do it, or words to that effect. Does that make any sense to you, the notion of the U.S. taking the oil of a sovereign nation that we are all allied with? No. No. I don't get it. And that's, some, that's not something you heard from General Mattis or anything else. I mean, I, I haven't heard any, you know, 
military personnel actually talking about taking the oil? Well, first of all, I don't know exactly how you would do it, but uh, no, I have not heard any of his national security advisors uh, mention the topic. In fact, I hadn't heard the president mention it until he, he sort of did the other day. Right. Yeah, it was the first time I'd heard him mention it since during the campaign. I'm curious whether it's Russia or Iran or China, any number of potential hotspots. Do you believe President Trump should be receiving President's daily brief, the, the, the PDB, the, which is the highest level intelligence briefing every day? He got it yesterday, I understand, wasn't on his official schedule today. Well, I don't know if he should receive it every day, uh, Anderson, because it doesn't change that radically from day to day unless there's some kind of emergency. Uh, I, I know that uh, President Obama used to get his briefing online sometimes, and I think you miss the give and take with your briefers when you do that. But uh, I, I believe that the president will pay close attention. His trip out to the CIA, I think, was symbolic in a lot of ways of his confidence in the, the CIA and the intelligence agencies. Senator McCain, I appreciate your time as always. Thank you. Thank you. Well, up next, Van Jones returns to the heart of coal country where candidate Trump promised to bring back jobs. What are voters in West Virginia expecting now that he's President Trump? You'll hear from them ahead.